This question requires you to read very carefully and think very carefully. You've got this particle moving on this straight line. Now, there's no indication of which direction it's going to begin with. And one of the common mistakes with this question is everybody assumed, or lots, sorry, lots of people assumed that the particle was only ever moving to the right. In actual fact, we're going to find that the particle starts by moving to the left and then it accelerates to the, to the right, um, with constant acceleration for the whole thing uh, pointing to the right. Now, it's constant acceleration, so it's a SUVAT problem. So if you set up a SUVAT and then try and pick out the various bits of information from this first paragraph that you need, um, you first find that S is going to be 18, because we're interested in this point here, and that's positive displacement of 18 metres. It takes nine seconds to get there. That information is here. After nine seconds, it's at that point. Uh, v is 8, we're told that its velocity um, when it's at A is 8 metres per second, positive. And we want to know what its initial velocity is, because that's what the question says, show that its initial speed is 4. So we need to find its initial velocity and see if that corresponds with an initial speed of 4. OK, if we use the Suvat equation, S equals a half E plus V times T, Substitute into that, solve it for u, we get u is minus 4 metres per second. And of course, that means it's a speed of 4 metres per second, even though it's going to the left. OK, um, then we need to find the acceleration as well. This is part b. Um, and so I've, you can use the same SUVAT setup here. Um, just no A, or do, you're just trying to find A. So I've decided to ignore U, because I didn't want to use my value of U, just in case I made a mistake. Um, so I've just used S, V, A and T, which is this SUVAT equation. If you solve that for A, you get 4 thirds metres per second square. Great, I know I'm going to need those values again, that U and that A. So I'm just going to copy those up here, and then just delete that. So I've got a bit of space to do the rest of the problem. OK, part two. We've got to show that P never actually reaches this point B. So it sets off here at, my, at 4 metres per second this way, slows down and accelerates the other way, but never reaches point B. Well, one way of showing that it never reaches point B is by trying to find, say, how fast it's going at point B or how long it takes to get to point B and showing that as you're trying to find the answers to one of those questions, you reach a contradiction. So it's still constant acceleration, so set up a SUVAT again, and let's write down what we know. This time we're interested in when it's at negative 10 displacement, i.e. at B. We know U is minus 4, we just found that in the last problem. Um, and we know that acceleration is 4 thirds metres per second to the right, so positive 4 thirds. So as I said, you can either try and find V, or you can try and find T, and in either case you should find a contradiction. I think it's going to be easier to play with v, and just use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. If you substitute into that, you end up with v squared is minus 10 and 2 thirds. And since we're trying to show that, I don't just want to put an x and leave it like that, I'm going to write down v squared cannot be negative, so therefore p is never at b. It simply doesn't make sense to imagine that it is there. By the way, if you'd decided to try and find t instead, you'd have been using s equals ut plus a half at squared, which will have led you to a quadratic in t, and it would have been a quadratic with no solutions, i.e. its discriminant would have been negative, and you'd have had to show that. OK, again, let's clear a bit of space for part three. Now, this is fairly disconnected from the other two parts of the problem. Um, except it's some of the information you're given about this is just that it's the same as the other particle. So you do need these values here. Um, right. This time it has variable acceleration. So you can't use SUVAT anymore. SUVAT's completely dead and gone. Useless. Don't touch it with a barge pole. Here we're told that it's initially at O. So in other words, initially means when T is zero. And it's at the origin, i.e. its displacement 
we're now using x for its displacement, which we tend to do when it's variable acceleration. So we're told this is this to begin with. So you're reading this text, but you're trying to think about it in this sort of language. OK, what else are we given down here? These bullet points. The velocity and acceleration of q when t is 0 are the same as those of the original particle when t is 0. In other words, when t is 0, the velocity is negative 4 and the acceleration is 4 thirds, just as before. Q reaches the point A, i.e. Q has um, displacement 18 when T is 6. So when T is 6, X is 18. And then we've got to do something. But clearly, looking at this, we're going to need to find the values of little a, little b, and little c using this information before we can try and find anything. So let's set about that. First, I might notice that um, I've just crossed that out because if we try and use this information, when t is 0, let's substitute this in here, t is 0, you just get x is 0 anyway. So actually this information here doesn't actually tell us anything new at all. So I'm just going to get rid of that. It's cluttering the page. So we have to start here. When t is 0, v is minus 4. We don't have an expression for v yet, but we can make one because we can differentiate this to get v. I'm doing that up here now. So differentiate uh, a t cubed, you get 3 a t squared. Differentiate the rest of the expression, you get this. Now let's use this information. When t is 0, v is minus 4. So substitute that in here, we get uh, minus 4 is c straight away. Great. Next, um, we're going to need to use this piece of information. Um, when t is 0, a is 4 thirds. We now need to find an expression for the acceleration. So differentiate v again, and if we do that, we get this expression. So now let's substitute in these initial conditions, and we get 4 thirds is 2b. Uh, so b is 2 thirds. Brilliant, we're nearly there. Next, we're going to be using this information here. So we're back to x now. But now that we know the values of b and c, let's rewrite our x with those in. So x is now a t cubed, but plus 2 thirds t squared and minus 4 t. I'm going to substitute these in and work out what a is. And uh, yeah, if you work that out yourself, you get a is 1 twelfth. OK, find the velocity of q at a. So find the velocity of our particle at a. Well, what do we know about what, did, what does at a mean? Well, at a means its displacement is 18. But notice we actually know its time there, don't we? Because it says here, q is at point a when t is 6, and that's more useful for us. So really, this uh, statement here, sorry, this request here to find the velocity of q at a means find v when t is 6. Find its velocity when t is 6, i.e. when it's at a. So let's rewrite our v again, but this time with our a, b, and c substituted in. And then simply substitute t equals 6. Leads to our final answer of v is 13 meters per second.